Welcome to the lesson activities for section 9.3 of Math 117. A certain type of bacterium splits in half every minute, which means that its population doubles every minute. If every one becomes two because it splits in half, the population is doubling. Okay, so suppose that at noon, a single bacterium colonizes a discarded food can. The bacterium and its descendants are all happy, but they fear the time when the can is completely full of bacteria. Doomsday. We're going to write a recursive formula for the number of bacteria in the can n minutes after noon. So I'm going to start um, by making a little table of values. Noon will be time zero, so when n equals zero, that's noon. And there is a single bacterium, one. Okay, and it splits in half every minute. So one minute later, there are now two bacteria. And another minute later, each of those two split in half, which means there are now four bacteria. And then another minute later, each of the four split in half. So now there are eight, 16, 32. We're doubling, right? Okay. So for a recursive formula, I would say, well, P sub n, the population at time n is always the population from the minute before, so P sub n minus 1 times 2. My explicit formula would be, well, P sub n equals, I'm starting with one bacteria, and I'm multiplying it by 2 over and over and over again, so times 2. And multiplying by 2 many, many times, repeated multiplication is denoted with an exponent. So we would say times 2 to the n. How many bacteria are in the can at 12.05? Well, I've got that in my table already, 32. I could verify it by using my explicit formula. P sub 5 should be 1 times 2 to the 5th which is 1 times 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32. That's 5 twos multiplied together. So we get 32, which is exactly what we had in the table. And then at 1210, I could continue in my table doubling. So I would have 128, 256, 512, 1024. So P10 would be 1, and then you double it 10 times, and 2 to the 10th is 1024. The can is completely full of bacteria at 1 p.m. We don't know how many, we just know that it's full. At what time was the can only half full of bacteria? Well, we know that the bacteria population doubles every one minute. So if it was full at 1 p.m., one minute before that, it was half full. So it was half full at 12.59 because it only takes one minute for to go from half full to full because it would double. All right, and then at what time was it only a quarter full? One minute before 12.59. One quarter full at 12.58. A bank account can be thought of as a population of money. So which would you rather have? One million dollars or a bank account that begins with one cent and doubles in value each day for 30 days? Okay, so... One million dollars, or let's look at this bank account. Um, we'll have N for the number of days, P sub N for the population in the account. The first day you have one cent, so that's 0 0.01 dollars. Wait, I put it in the wrong column. It's day zero, the day you open the account you have $0.01 in there, one cent. Okay, one day later, it doubles, so you have two cents. Another day later, it doubles again, and now you have four cents. 
then you have eight cents, then you have 16 cents. Um, I think we get the pattern. The question is, what would I have in there after 30 days? So I could put in 30 entries into this table, or it might be quicker if I write a formula. So I'm gonna say, well, my population starts with one cent and it just keeps doubling. So I'm multiplying by two over and over again, n times, so times two to the n. So that means p sub 30 after 30 days is 0 0.01 times two to the 30th. And for this, I need a calculator. So two times two times two, 30 times is a really big number, times 0 0.01, because the order of operations says do the exponent first. So first you do two to the 30th, then you multiply by 0 0.01, and we get, let's see, 1073748.24. Wow. So it looks like you end up with over $10 million if you do the one penny that doubles in value daily for 30 days. So I want the bank account. I want the one penny. Each of the following sequences follows a linear, exponential, or a logistic growth model. For each sequence, determine which model applies. So we want to say, um, are we always adding or subtracting the same amount? That would be linear. Are you multiplying by the same amount? That is exponential. And logistic is when um, you either level out or, or bounce around a single value. So 3, 6, 12, 24, uh, that is multiplying by 2, right? Times 2, times 2, times 2, times 2. So that is exponential. Exponential growth. Okay, 3, 6, 9, 12, that's plus 3. 3 plus 3 is 6, plus 3 is 9, plus 3 is 12, plus 3 is 15. That makes that linear. And then 8 four, six, six, six. So I've leveled off at six, which makes this logistic. 0 0.16, 0 0.08, 0 0.04, 0 0.02, 0 0.01. These are being halved. 0 0.16 divided by two is 0 0.08, divided by two is 0 0.04, divided by two, blah, blah, blah. So if you're multiplying or dividing by the same thing, that's exponential. If you are adding or subtracting the same thing, it's linear. So what I have here, it looks like I'm subtracting 0 0.15. 0 0.9 minus 0.15 is 0 0.65. I'm sorry, maybe it's 0 0.25. 0 0.25, yeah. 0.9 minus 0.25 is 0 0.65. Minus 0 0.25 is 0 0.4. Minus 0 0.25 is 0.15. Minus 0.25 is negative 0.1. So I'm consistently subtracting. If you're consistently adding or subtracting, that is linear. And then 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So this could be any of them because we could be adding 0 all the time. Plus 0, plus 0, plus 0. Make, so that would be linear. You could multiply by 1 over and over because um, then you'd get 0 0.5 times 1 is 0 0.5 times 1 is 0 0.5 times 1 is 0 0.5. Or you could say, well, this is leveling off at 0.5, which makes it logistic. So this one, you could model as all three.